Well, greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers, and everyone else joining us here for our premiere episode of Let's Get Metaphysical Show, where we're just going to sit back and relax and have some fun talking with our guests. And our first guest here is Dr. Tiana Conti. And I had a, quite an extraordinary experience while doing the interview with Dr. Conti. I kept feeling raindrops falling on me. I'm indoors. It's not raining indoors. Nothing's leaking. Raindrops were falling on me. I have very interesting experiences. You are definitely not the average person, and I have a community of people who are spiritual, but you're kind of in a different space from everybody else. Well, thank you, Ali, but I also want to acknowledge you because you are so open. You fully received the energy transmission that I was sending through the podcast. I was guided to, oh, I've never done this with other people's podcasts. I've done it with my podcast, but, you know, I thought, Allie will be fine with it. I'll just send the transmission <laughs> through. Well, you are not only fine with it, raindrops keep falling on your head. <laughs> well, I'm going to be naughty and tell you what I, I tell your listeners, what I told you offline. You're so open and you've gone to a new level for yourself on so many levels, including even changing the name of the podcast, that this was in my training as a Catholic and I'm interfaith minister. So all religions are loved and, and no particular, I'm, I'm whatever. Uh, but that's like a baptism through water, a new beginning, an anointing. And you just received it from your own soul self. And that's interesting because I'm very much in touch with Native Americans, indigenous people. I never know what the politically correct term is. But I did a sweat lodge. And after a sweat lodge, which I'll never do another one, I was going to die. I don't know if you've ever done one. I've done many. I've oh, done really? many. Oh, but after you come out of that intense heat that feels like your lungs are burning, yeah. they dip you in ice cold water and it's... Oh, they didn't with me, thank God, because I do not like to go into ice cold water. However, I can say that a sweat lodge, they do want you to feel like you're going to die. That's the whole idea is that <laughs> transformation, but it is intense and... Nietzsche's quote really fits. That which does not kill you makes you <laughs> I don't know. I honestly didn't feel better because of it, especially because <laughs> I was shivering after that. What it probably wasn't ice cold, probably just was in comparison to what I just said come out. Well, of. as a naturopath, they love things like that, you know, extreme heat right. or extreme cold. But personally, I may be trained to do talk about that, but you won't get me doing it. You'll get me into the hot tub, the, uh, the sweat lodges, no problem. Get that cold water away from me. No, 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 no. I'll just get the air of nature just bathe me over. I'll drink a lot of cold water, yes. It, it's... My body does not react. I'm like a cat, you know, I just want to get out of that cold water. Huh. It's crazy. It, you know, there are customs that go across all spiritual philosophies because I, I was think oh I, I got lost where I was um oh sauna you do a sauna that's being in a hot place and then you take a cold shower and then you go back in the hot sauna and then you take a cold shower and it's and, I don't I take the hot the hot sauna I get out and take a breath, run around half naked most of the time and drink water, go back into the sauna. Mm -hmm. Or I go from the sauna to the steam room. <laughs> and so then I get hot water. Then I go back into the sauna to dry off, then back into the hot, wa hot water. Notice my thing is hot. I'm a reptile, yeah. energy, I think. Yeah, I like interesting. It. Yeah, it's cold is hard on my body. Okay, because the other thing that I had been taught and a lot of natural type doctors recommend after you finish your nice warm shower, that you finish it off with cold. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's, that's the training. It stimulates the immune system. It gives mm -hmm. it a shock. <laughs> but it's too much of a shock for this person's body. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, but ideally, it is the ideal to stimulate 
the immune support and system to have hot, cold, hot, cold. It's the shock that gets everything stimulated. But I'm sorry, I'll be honest, I don't do it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no, thank you. I can never do it long enough, but I did feel it refreshing, but then it's like, okay. So you have such a diversity of training. So mm -hmm. I thought I had a lot. <laughs> How did you, I'm just assuming you were tuned in and when you got yes. instructions, okay, go, and, and whatever you wanted to learn presented itself for you to Allie, exactly. The, Allie, you are so intuitive. You are so spot on. And the funniest one was my shamanism. Mm. Wait till you hear the story. This is a true story. I could put my hand on the Bible like they do in court and swear it's the whole truth and nothing but, because I. I'd heard of shamanism, but I didn't know what it was. A letter came in the mail, a little card, a little flyer. This is the days where you get a lot of things in the mailbox before mm -hmm. email. This was in the 1980s. And it had an advanced shamanic trip to Peru with Alberto Violdo and Peruvian shamans for initiation. I had no clue what that was. I had no idea what we were talking about, but I always wanted to go to Peru. Mm. So I thought, oh, it's a trip to Peru. Well, I didn't realize what I'm getting myself <laughs> into, not at all. So you could just picture me on the surface. You know, my brand is off the shoulder. I could look like the Italian American princess, but I am all the things that not only I've been trained, but like my dad taught me, you were born, raised and trained to be this visionary leader and guide and I do see into the future I do not even see into the future it's more like I, I feel into it you know it's like um, I was mm -hmm. doing, talking to the, the have people from who have deceased before anybody really was doing it back in mm. the wow. 60s you know and and doing energy work in a career of it in the 70s when it was barely understood so that's what i mean by trending into the future but anyway i had no idea what shamanism was so i get there and the first night was amazing we're at the grand hotel bolivar and it's this beautiful luxury old hotel in lima and i'm going oh workshops in a place like this and I'm visiting <laughs> Peru. this looks like a good thing to do and the next day we had scheduled to go to um the Nazca Plains to take a helicopter ride over the Nazca Plains, you know? Mm. And I was like, oh, this is the kind of tour I like. Well, I didn't realize what was gonna happen next. This is what I mean by, we are all guided all the time. And the more the brain is quiet to listen, like you said, Allie, to listen and take that step. Remember what we talked about in the podcast, surrender. Okay, the letter came, the guidance was to go each day okay i made arrangements i didn't know what i was doing step by step the next thing you know i'm on a plane bound for lima for god knows what reason i have no clue you'll be shown the way so there i am and we take this wonderful helicopter ride over the nasca plains and we come out and i trip on something and i now have a sprained ankle mm -hmm. oh but it, it's really good it's really really good because the shaman, there's the Peruvian shaman, and then there's the American shaman. And the American shaman looked at me like, oh, our Italian American princess, now she can't even, he looked at me and he said, you could just sit this one out. And I'm like, cause that evening we were gonna do our first big, whatever the experience of shamanism was on mm. the plane, the Nazca plane that we'd flown over that morning. Mm. And it was gonna be a ritual. I had no idea. But remember, I believe in the power of our bodies to heal itself. And I've been doing it since I was five years old. Mm. So to me, to put my hand on the boo-boo and apologize to my foot for having sprained it and to talk to it and ask what it needed and wanted from me, blah, blah, blah. And the foot, soul through the foot. Okay, just so we know the soul is communicating through the foot. The messenger was the sprained ankle. And that's the difference between soul medicine and human medicine. Soul medicine is you don't just erase, you know, kill the messenger or try to treat the symptom. You ask the soul what the root is. 
Well, my little foot said, everybody's projecting onto you that you are the little Italian American princess. Mm -hmm. They don't realize who you are. Take a stand for yourself, show them. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to do that? And it said, do what you do naturally, heal me. And I said, oh, okay, foot, I know you have the ability to heal yourself and thank you for the message that you delivered. I now know I will take a stand with love and not buy into the projections of I'm less than because I don't know shamanism and I haven't been trained and nobody figured out how I ever got that letter in the first place because I wasn't on the mailing list. <laughs> okay, that's how wild God and the universe can get. <laughs> and so that night I'm boarding the bus and Alberto pulls me aside and says, you can't come this evening. And I said, why not? You know, like I paid for the, for the program, I'm willing to go. And he said, you have a bad foot. Well, first of all, I said, never call my foot bad. Mm -hmm. She was a little wounded. But I pulled up my foot and I moved it all around. The sprained ankle was completely healed. Mm -hmm. And he looked like <laughs> the afternoon. And I said, so she's completely fine. We're coming. And I boarded the bus. And that very first night on the Nazca Plains was a ritual that in my head, I was like, What's a nice Italian girl like me doing in a place like this? I had no idea. We were doing these strange rituals that I'd never been exposed to. Because remember, I, I had not known what shamanism was. <laughs> I barely heard the word. And there I was in a group of advanced oh. students. Oh, my. They were there for their initiation. I'm a beginner. <laughs> God sent me to an initiation program. <laughs> And I had to do all the things that they did, but here's the wild part, Allie. I did it naturally. Mm -hmm. And the American shaman then started paying attention, but the Peruvian shaman, he just laughed and laughed and laughed because he saw right through all of the projection of, she doesn't know what she's doing. She's the only one who's not dressed in blue jeans and t-shirts, there she is with her designer outfits or whatever she came with, you know, but he, you know, cause I didn't know, I thought I was going on a vacation. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I mean, I had a whole assortment of things in my magic bag that I was pulling things out of everywhere. But, um, but the funniest part, so this, it gets deeper if, if you're interested. One of the things we had to do, Ali, is go through what they called the needle. And the needle is where all these disincarnate spirits attack you but you've got to go down the needle to the end of the needle to get your vision. And then you come back. That, that, what I'm saying is this was advanced shamanism. I've never <laughs> done a thing like that in my life. But being Italian and having a mother who was a little bit mentally off, I had to deal with real craziness. So to me, the disincarnate spirits were like a child's play. Like, oh, please go into the light. Please go into the light. I'll help you. You know, it didn't phase me at all. Mm. I get to the end of the needle and there's my dad who had been passed away for decades saying, I still don't understand how you do it and what you do, but I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> what every child wants to hear. And then I came back into the circle. And then they announced that one person was trapped by the disincarnate spirit, one person. And who would want to volunteer to go into and help the person come out of the circle? Well, all these people were raising their hands. Ali, I did the exact opposite. I'm putting my eyes down. You know, like, you know, look at me. Mm -mm. Not going anywhere. And I share this because we don't have a clue of the greatness that our soul has planned for us when we get out of the way. So I'm looking down and all of a sudden the Peruvian shaman, Don Eduardo Calderon, I loved him to pieces. He looks and he goes, I was called Tina at the time. Tina, you come. And everybody's like, you picked her? As a volunteer? Like, you know, and he gives me his big sword, shamanic sword. And that's like supposed to be the honor of all honors to get the shaman sword to protect you, to go into. It was heavier than I was practically. I was like, I don't need this thing. But I took it and I was grateful. And then everybody's looking at me and I leave the circle and I go into the needle and there's a person cowering as the spirits are pounding on him. And I'm like, oh, come on. 
you're in physical form and for everybody to hear this. Physical is greater than disincarnate spirits. Okay? They don't have a body. You do. And you have the vibration of helping them into light. That's why they're, they're disincarnate. They either have lost their way into the light or they, they are earthbound for some attachment. But you can help them. You know, I was always taught to help a person release suffering. So I took the guy's hand and said, come on, you can do this. We'll do this together. And I pulled him out and we both walked back to the circle and everybody's like, oh. and, and he was trembling. And they said, how are you? How did you do it? He goes, she did it. <laughs> and I said, no, you did it. I told you to just send the light and take a stand and step up and just take my hand. Because I always want to make sure you have your soul power. And if you're ever with someone who wants to take credit, this is the shamanic get thee behind me. Because mm -hmm. I was real clear. He did it. I just helped. You know, I'm just the catalyst or the guide. That's all we are. Mm -hmm. It's all between them and their God source. And that was the beginning of my shamanic initiation. And then it, we went into the jungles and we did all sorts of uh, medicinals. And that was my, that was in the eighties, but it was indelible. And I came back in time for the AIDS epidemic and mm. be able to really help people through the AIDS epidemic because of my shamanic training. So see the universe knew mm. what we needed next. Yeah. And I made a connection that is very naughty and I'll save it for later between us, Alex. <laughs> but yeah, Starsky was another initiation and then we know what I was introduced to for the latest epidemic. Interesting. I never made that connection. Bulletin hot off the presses right now. Oh, that's very cool. I never had a picture quite like that. I knew somebody who called herself a shaman but I really never <laughs> witnessed anything that could verify that for me but wow so no, we, that, that was only the training Alex that was only a training <laughs> we, we had to come back to our our home state and we had two tests that we had to pass and the shaman would know if we did it and both of them had quite a wild experience. One was mild, just doing a fire ceremony where you put your vision and then, you know, how you put your hands into the fire and become one. I've done that too. Oh yeah, put hands through the fire. That was easy. The other one was you have to spend 12 hours in a, a mountaintop. Now, mind you, this was March in New York. Mm. Find a mountain and it has snow, okay? And you couldn't have any food or anything except the clothes on your back. And you had to get a vision for your personal uh, vision for your, your personal life and a vision for your planetary uh, service to others. And once you get those two visions within the 12 hours, then your initiation was complete with the fire summary and the, and the shaman would know. He didn't need to have you call in or send an email or take a test. He would just know if you did it. Well, Ali, would you like to know what happened then? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I'm going, and mind you, I don't know how cold it's going to be for those 12 hours. Mm -hmm. I had a client that I was seeing, and I would go to clients' homes at the time to do healing work with them. And the clients I went to see were both psychiatrists, they were doctors and they were brilliant. They became colleagues and dear friends. And she looked at me because you're gonna go to the mountains dressed like that. Again, the way I dress very, I have my little boots on, my regular little boots on, my regular little outfits on, I'm gonna to go to the mountains. This is how the soul protects us from mm -hmm. our own not knowing what the hell we're doing. If you listen and say, thank you, so she gave me, and she was a hiker. They went hiking a lot. So she gave me her socks, her boots. Um, she gave me, uh, the, the coat I had was fine because it was one of those down thingies, but she gave me sweaters to go underneath it. She gave me a hat, you know, and gloves, mm. all the stuff that I did not even 
have, but see, you could wear anything you wanted, but I hadn't, I just dressed like you're going to the store. She's like, no, 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 no. This is how you dress. So I get there and I get my personal vision really, no, not my personal vision. I get my planetary vision really quickly. I'm there, the sun is setting and she gave me hiking boots, remember? And mm -hmm. just snow. And so my hiking boots were in the snow with the sun setting and I heard the voice. Remember, I'm a clear audience. I heard the voice. That's your, that's your planetary vision. And my ego first said, see, we have our ego mind, our ego voice, and then we have our soul voice and we have to know the difference. My ego voice took one look at it and said, are you kidding me? She, hiking boots in the snow is my vision for the planet? What the hell does that mean? But see, unlike most ego voices, my ego voice knew to say, okay, tell me what you're talking about because I don't understand. And then my soul voice, see, when you get out of the way and be quiet and ask the higher part to respond and don't get caught up in blah, 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 blah you know, try to figure it out because then you go into your brain with the limiting beliefs and the projections and the visualizations and all the mind stuff, which is fine, but it's chatter. Listen to what, and now you know who I am, Allie, from our, our times together. What it showed me was that the boots in the snow were like the eyes, they, they were arches. And where the sun hit was at the level uh -huh. of the third eye. Hmm. And it told me, and this is in my first book. I actually wrote about this in my first book, Love's Fire, Beyond Mortal Boundaries. And it said, yours is to help awaken people to their spiritual eye of seeing beyond the physical form and light the way through the darkness. Whoa, what a difference from two footprints in the snow. <laughs> but guidance. So that came right away. I felt really good. I thought, got this one before midnight. I'll be fine. Mm -mm, it was almost midnight and I had no personal vision. And if you didn't have both a planetary and a personal vision, that's it. You're not initiated. You're done. And I, you know, started to accept that, but I wasn't going to give up. You never give up. Remember the surrender each day, step by step, you'll be shown the way. It doesn't say resist, stay, step by step, you'll, you'll, you'll fail your way. You know, it says you'll be shown the way. Trust. Don't give up. So I didn't. But it was getting very cold, very dark. And the difference between when the sun is out and when you're dark is very different, especially outdoors in the mountains. So now I'm like, okay, whatever. And I lean back. And how this happened, I don't know. In the dead of winter, two trees next to each other had a blossom in the dead of winter. And I heard, you stand strong as your tree with another who stands strong as their tree and you share a common vision. The blossom was like between the two tree branches. It was so beautiful. And then I had had my vision, but it wasn't quite 12 hours and you had to stay 12 hours, nothing less. But I had my vision, so I was feeling, you know, you eat your Wheaties, you feel your strength. I did it, I did it, I did it. Oh, God had something else in mind. All of a sudden, here I am, dead of winter. Crunch, crunch, crunch in the snow. Who's there? Mm. Oh, dear God. But I couldn't leave. I had to do 12 hours. But Ali, imagine you're, you're there, but you hear this crunching noise. And to tell you the truth, in a mountain by yourself, it's like, is it a human or is it an animal? Either way, I don't want to be there. 
but I wanted to complete my initiation. So PS, I did have a flashlight. I was able to discern that it was an animal, whether it was a bear, a deer, I couldn't tell because all I saw were big eyes staring at me and all I could telepath back, again, another training. I love you, we are one. I have no food, I have no water. I have nothing that you want except my love for you. You go your way, I go mine. You go your way, I go mine. I have nothing to offer you except love. And whoever, whatever it was, left. I hightailed out of that park so fast, your head would spin. But by the time I got back to my car, these people who had been in that and were leaving when I arrived, because they said it's too cold, nobody should be out there in this kind of cold, had left a whole bag of food. If you survive this so-called initiation, because I told them I was doing an initiation mm -hmm. as a medicine woman, here are some apples and here are some Coke. And, and it was such a sweet thing to have a note with a goodie bag on my car. And that completed my initiation. And those were my two messages. So I would, I would invite everyone to do a vision quest, not in the, in the jungles and mm -hmm. yeah. Peru or in the mountains in, in fierce weather, but in your home, <laughs> just ask that part of you. Use the video that I give as a gift or the code and, and just ask for the questions, ask empowered questions and then be still. And whether your guidance comes in the form of a dream, a vision, a guidance, an animal, an idea, make sure it comes from the stillness. That's what I learned in that experience because boy, was it quiet until that crunch in that mountaintop place in New York in the dead of winter. <laughs> so yes, that's what I mean by initiated shaman. We did not do it in a workshop setting. My goodness, that's something. <laughs> I used to live at the, um, the what's the name of that trail? Um, Appalachian? Appalachian. I used to live right on the trail. Oh, whoa. And, and I would go uh, there were like six different entries into the trail where I lived and one day I um, go and I always hear rustling in the leaves and I'd say you know hi who's there why don't you come out and say hello and <laughs> the last time I did that I was really glad that no one came out to say hello because I looked down and my foot was next to a bear a fresh bear print that was a whole lot bigger than my footprint so I went home and I never went back in the woods and asked to say hello again <laughs> oh I can imagine oh Alan. yeah it's, it's like we are so that's another thing you brought up a great point though we are so protected you know you want to say come on say hello <laughs> yeah. imagine if a big bear had come out to say hello to you what would you have done I probably had my whistle. They're supposed to be afraid of if you make noises. I don't know what they're supposed to be afraid of, but let me tell you, I was afraid of the crunching of not knowing what it was. Yeah. There was no whistle and making noise <laughs> would be me passing out. <laughs> I thought it was the exact opposite just because 